Hey guys, Keegan Smith here for Real Movement Project. I'm going to talk to you in this video about Steve uh, Juster, Juster's book, uh, Rock, Iron, Steel, The Book of Strength. Um, I read it first about the Juster Method uh, through Easy Strength, a book by Dan John and Pavel Tatsalin. It's a book that covers a lot of uh, basic principles of, of strength training and strength development. And uh, it's a book that I really like. I like the simplicity of it. Um, it makes getting strong a simple process. Uh, I've used the 40 day challenge within that program. Uh, it helped me to press, military press 70 kilos for five reps um, and press over body weight, which I'd never done before. Uh, it also helped me to a new PB on the deadlift at that time at 205 um, and then later that year pulled 210. And so I had some good results off that simple program. So the Just Method is something I've always been interested in. And you know, I just decided the other day to, to get grab the uh, the ebook Kindle version, and uh, I've checked it out. So really interesting book, definitely outside the square. Um, he's sort of an old school approach, or just an alternative approach, I guess. He, he really likes um, strongman, and I guess it's unbounded kind of strength development. There's there's sort of traditional powerlifting barbell strength in there, but mostly the focus is odd lifts and odd objects. He was able to get to a 200 pound. Uh, lockout on the deadlift uh, which is around about world record level um, just a yeah phenomenal lift works out uh, 900 and something kilos so um, yeah what did he do how did he do it what are the methods so I'm gonna go through some of what what I learned from the book uh, he has uh, a lot of singles he uses a lot of singles he recommends using a lot of singles I'm also a big fan of singles uh, I've you know building to building to ones and, and threes um, and doing multiple reps, uh, sets of one um, with you know submaximal loads, sort of 80 to, to 90, 95 percent fundamentals of, of what I've used, and you know it's something that he also really recommends. Um, some of his programs uh, would go like uh, his, his base protocol, the one that's in the Easy Strength book, is uh, three singles on Monday, five singles on Tuesday, seven singles on Wednesday, continues on throughout the week, two more reps each day. Um, and gradually increasing the the poundage, so you know five or ten pound jump uh, each week, so two and a half to five kilo uh, increase each week, and you know it's a very patient way of improving, but it also kind of uh, uh, it resonates with me with the principle of you know whenever you actually want to improve a lift, to, to do it with higher frequency um, and at a level that you can recover from is is what really gets the the quickest results. Um, so yeah, that that's a. Um, one of his base protocols, there's, there's about six others there, I'll let you guys check them out, but they're sort of variations of, of similar themes, um, some ways to do it so you can cut it into three days a week, etc. I really liked his uh, deadlift recommendation for the program as well. It's uh, five five reps, 10 to 15 sets, so it's using um, you know quite a sub-maximal load. Day one, you'd be lifting the weight two inches off the floor, and day two would be three inches above the knee uh, to lock out. Again, five sets of 10 to 15, uh, five reps, 10 to 15 sets. And then day three would be, be some intensity. Um, so 60% singles uh, for six reps, not too much rest, about 20, 30 seconds rest in between. And then um, building 20 kilos each set up until you can't lift the weight anymore. And when you can lift that weight, that, that next weight, when you make that jump of 20 kilos, then you go back um, and increase your day one weight by 20 kilos and increase your day two weight by 40 kilos. So, you know, very simple sort of linear progression um, strength improvement, but built around the concept of frequency and practice. Now, he, he also sort of talks about uh, Ironman, you know, Ironman triathlon, and sort of makes a little bit of a joke that Ironman don't even necessarily lift weights. Some of them do, but, um, you know, but he, he gives an example of, he, he, he did a lot of hard labor jobs, and one day he had a labor job working next to a 140 pound guy, so a, a, you know, a little guy, and he's a, he's a big guy. And um, the work that he had to do was like picking up you know, big pieces of metal that were sort of between uh, 60 and 120 kilos and, and knocking something out of the middle of them. It's, it's metal works type stuff. And he, tr he was working with this guy, and the guy was absolutely killed him in terms of work capacity. And from there, he'd been training for 10 years already before that, and he'd got strong in the gym, but I guess he realized that he was still pretty weak um, when it came to, 
to endurance and to, to being able to repeat something over and over again. So he recommends, you know, dig in and do something really hard once a month, once every two weeks, once every two months. Um, but do, do 100 sets of, you know, something that's about 50% and do, you know, three to five reps. So it's something easier, but just to show that, you know, that, you're, that you've got some guts and that you can work through something and get through some tonnage and volume. And my experience was uh, while traveling, I, I saw guys unloading massive beams of timber uh, on the Amazon. I was you know, traveling in, in Ecuador, uh, stayed in a little village there for a few days uh, with my brother actually, and um, we saw these guys unloading these beams and they were absolutely you know, ripped, shredded. They looked like bodybuilders, you know, they were little stocky uh, Peruvian guys, but they looked like they were ready to go on stage, absolutely shredded. And what they were doing was picking up uh, one or two of these beams out of a boat, walking with them, uh, carrying them overhead, and putting them down inside the back of a truck. And it was hot as hell, and you can imagine that, well, there were a lot of beams. You could see a, a, a lot, a lot of beams there. So, you know, the ability to work continuously for a long period of time is something that pretty much everyone with a great physique will tell you that they do. There's very few guys who are natural who have a great physique that aren't pushing volume. If you look at some of the Arnold Schwarzenegger stuff, you know, he talks about training like six hours a day, and a lot of the original bodybuilders, you know, they did that. There's a place for intensity. I'm not saying we don't need to use intensity, but if we're never really challenging ourselves in terms of volume and in terms of mental fortitude, um, then we're missing something. And I like the way just it talks about, um, I don't know why I'm kind of giving it some kind of Spanish pronunciation or something, but um, yeah, he, you know, he really liked that. So he talks about, he did uh, 100 sets of 20 at 360 kilos on the quarter squat. So obviously the, the range of motion is shorter on the quarter squat, but that's, that's a phenomenal amount of weight. It took him three hours, um, short rests, sort of uh yeah less than uh like a minute or so rest between sets and you know it's an experience that will change your life you only have to do one of those kind of things to be able to say well yeah i'm i'm, I'm capable of more i'm tougher um and every every session that you do from then on every five by five session is it, it can only be so hard right it's it's nothing compared to that i just watched um a session uh, from Candido. Candido uh, is, is a powerlifter. I may have stuffed up his last name there. But he has a, a YouTube channel with a ton of followers. He did a, a hundred thousand pound squat challenge. So he did uh, you know proper squats, hundred thousand pounds uh, to celebrate having a hundred thousand YouTube followers. And you know and he ate hundred McNuggets at the same time. And it nearly killed him. You know it was tough. It took him like six hours. But if you put that back into a frame of reference, you know, from then on, nothing's ever going to be that difficult. And he's, you know, a world-class powerlifter. I think he came third in a championship uh, recently. So uh, I, I really believe that if we're never doing that kind of work, then we're missing out on something. And a lot of you are probably going to straight away think, oh, well, CrossFit, you know, this is like, you know, CrossFit. But it doesn't have to be racing for time. Um, and there is a lot to be learned from CrossFit. You know, some of these guys are doing things that, you know, all these guys actually at the World Games are doing stuff that would have been considered humanly po impossible uh, 10 years ago. If someone had said tw 20 years ago that it was humanly possible to do what those guys did in that amount of time, um, it was impossible. Only through creating that community and setting those standards and gradually building that up has that become possible. And it's it's extreme, um, but it's you know it's something worth learning from. Anytime someone achieves an extreme level of success, I think we should learn from them. Back to the book, just to finish up. Partial lifts are a big part of what he does. We spoke about quarter squats, we spoke about rack pulls. Loaded carries um, are a big part of what he talks about. Even running with barbells, running with weighted vests. Um, so a little bit of out of the box stuff. Some of it you can th you think would either have influenced Dan John or you know they come from the same school of thought with uh, a lot of the loaded carries. Uh, barrel lifts, shovel lifts, and back lifts. So if you like thinking about some of the stuff that old school strength guys, you know Paul Anderson and these guys actually worked on, um, before gyms became so you know rigid and, and focused on barbells, uh, that that's really interesting to, to sort of check out as well if you're a um, you know a strength lover, as well as uh, someone who likes to train, but you know you like the academic side or the historical side of it as well, like I do. Um, what else do we do here? He got up, yeah, he got up to 910 kilo lockouts. Yeah, there's an encyclopedia of lifts within that book as well, where he explains why why he likes the different books. His food recommendations are pretty good. I wouldn't say his body composition is, is amazing, but um, he recommends fasting once a week, which is something that I've had some great results with. Um, fasting and uh, also including some raw food a couple times a week at least, and eating, eating your veggies, um, some greens. You know, simple nutrition guidelines that he gives, uh, I think are bang on the money. Um, and also talks about just experimenting with your training. 
So, you know, think it and then do it and, and get the experience. And, and from there, you'll, you'll be a better coach. You'll be a better person. You have more to give in life. You know, you've got to take on some challenges time, from time to time. At the moment, I'm doing a squat challenge. You can check out that, uh, one of my other posts here. Uh, but, you know, I want you to, you know, challenge yourself and step outside your comfort zone. Steve Juster's book, Rock, Iron, Steel, The Truth, uh, the book of strength will definitely challenge you to go outside your comfort zone and give you some new ideas, some new stuff that you can uh, incorporate into your training and, and new ways to think about uh, what lifting is all about. If you want to expand your horizons and see things from a bit, of a bit of a different perspective, it's worth checking out. If you read it, let me know what you think and I uh, look forward to seeing you improving your training and talk to you soon. If you liked the video, like, subscribe, uh, all that sort of stuff and I'll talk to you soon.